Let's start with the first approach, which is content-based recommender system. The main idea of content-based recommender system is to recommend items to custom apps similar to previous items rated highly by apps. For example, in the case of movie recommender systems, we can just recommend movies with the same actors, directors, or genre to the user. So if a user keeps watching sci-fi movie and the recommender system may very well also recommend a lot of sci-fi movies to the user. And as another example, if the items are websites, blogs, or news, we will just recommend other sites with similar content. So here's a plan of action. If given a user and we know that this user likes these items, the first step we can do is that we can build item profiles for, for these items. For example, the first, I first item, its profile would be red and circle since it's a red circle. And for the second item, its profile would be red and triangle. And in the next step, we will build the user profile by combining the item profiles of the, of the previous items. And in this case, the user profile will be red, circles, and triangles. And since we have both the item profiles and the user profiles, then we can from a pool of candidate items, we can find the items that best match the user profiles. And then we can recommend these items to the user. And in this case, we'll probably recommend this item to the user since it's also red. So this is the overview of the content-based recommender system approach. And next we'll go through more details step-by-step. Step. For the first step, we will create an item profile for each item. And here the profile is a set of features or a vector of features. For example, in the case of movies, it can be a vector of authors, titles, actors, and directors. Specifically, it can be a binary vector where each entry represents one actor. And let's say that if an actor is in the movie, then the corresponding entry of the vector can be set to one, and otherwise it will be set to zero. And in the case of tags, if the items are actually tags, then we can use the set of important words in the document as the item profile. The one natural question is how to pick the important features. So in the, in the case of tags is how to pick the important words in the document. Usually we can just use the heuristic from typical text mining, we can use TFIDF. And here TFIDF stands for term frequency and inverse document frequency. And a term here simply means feature and document here means items. So what is TFIDF exactly? Let's say that FIJ is the frequency of term I or feature I in document J. So these are basically how many times that, that the term I appears in document J. Then the term frequency of term I in document J is just Fij divided by the maximum with regard to K of Fkj. And this denominator here is just the frequency of the most frequent item in the document J. So basically, we are just trying to normalize the term frequency to discount the longer documents. And you can see that if a term appears more times in document J, its corresponding term frequency would also be larger. But here there's a problem because you may have noticed that there are often a lot of words in the document and these words appear a lot of times, but they're actually not important at all. For example, the words like the, or, uh, these are very common words, but they're not important at all. And this is why 
not only we need the term frequency, we, all, we also need the inverse document frequency, which is IDF. And the IDF is computed as the log of capital N over NI, where here the N is just the total number of documents, and NI is the number of documents that mention the term I. So here you can see that if uh, if a term appears in most of the documents, then its IDF would be very, very small because the denominator would be relatively large. So for common words like the or uh, they will get a very low IDF. And finally, we can compute the TF IDF score as TF times IDF. Then the document profile can simply be the set of words with the highest TFIDF scores together with their score. So basically, these would be a high dimensional vectors, and each entry would be either zero or other real numbers. So here's the first step. And once we get the item, item profile, we can then compute the user profile by combining the item profiles from the user history. So we can do this by simply using the weighted average of all the item profiles that the user has rated. Or we can use a slightly advanced approach to compute the weighted average of only the top rated items. And once we get both the item profiles and user profiles, we can finally do the predictions or, or recommendations. So here's the idea. Given the user profile X, which is a high dimensional vector, and the item profile I, which is also a high dimensional vector, we can then estimate that similarity by computing that cosine similarity. And the cosine similarity is just the inner product of X and I divided by the norm of X and the norm of I. And as you can see here, the larger this number is, the larger, the larger this cosine is, the smaller this angle will be. And that means this item and the, this user has larger similarity. And this is why we call this, call this metric cosine similarity. And after we get the cosine similarity for all the items, we can just rank all the candidate items by their corresponding cosine similarity. And then we can recommend only the items with the largest cosine similarity to the users. And next, let's talk about the pros and cons of quantum-based approach. The first advantage of quantum-based approach is that there's no need to use the data on other users. So there's no specific problem. This is because in quantum-based approach, we only need the items of the same users to build the user profile. And the second advantage is that it's able to recommend to users with unique tastes. In the next part, we'll talk about the second approach, which is collaborative filtering. And we'll see that in collaborative filtering, it actually relies on the judgment of all the other users. And therefore for collaborative filtering, it's actually difficult to recommend to users with unique taste. But this is not the case for quantum-based approach. For quantum-based approach, it's actually quite easy. And the third advantage is that it's able to recommend new and unpopular items. So there's no code star item drop. And this is because even for new and unpopular items, since we already have all the information about the items, we can readily compute the item profiles for this user. And then we can recommend these new, new items. And the last advantage is that it's able to provide explanations. For example, we can just provide explanations of recommended items by listing the content features that cause an item to be recommended. 
for example, we can say that we recommend the movie matches to you because you seem to like sci-fi movies a lot. For the cons, the first disadvantage of quantum-based approach is that finding appropriate features is actually very difficult. And this is the case for images, movies, and music. You, you, may, you may think that in the previous example where we have movie recommender system, we say that we can use a genre or actor to build the item profiles. But in reality, there is actually a very, very large number of movies in the same genre. And users are not necessarily loyal to a particular actor. So in practice, recommender systems using the content are actually much, much more difficult. And the second disadvantage is about the recommendations for new users. So basically, how do you build a user profile for a user that has no prior history? Remember that we need at least one item and its item profile to build the user's profile. But if we don't have any items for the user, how can we build a user profile, right? The best we can do is to use the average of all other user profile, but this is not gonna work very well. And the third disadvantage is over-specialization. Over and this means that Content-based approaches will never recommend items outside the user's content profile. And also, since people might have multiple entries, but content-based approach typically cannot capture these kind of multiple entries very effectively. And it's also unable to exploit quality judgment of other users since it relies only on the item profiles of the same users. And this last point is actually the key idea of collaborative filtering, which we'll cover in the next part.